Panda McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I have lots of hot topics, things to update you on, and then I have a great interview with the hilarious Josh Wolf, and it's funny and it's juicy, and there's even some life lessons in it. So, but before we get into it, let me tell you about my fun weekend, okay? Um, I am just enjoying a California summer. I am trying to do all these things in in and around LA and Southern California, um, just to appreciate where I live. Uh, so... I went on a wine hike. I'm wearing the shirt. No, I had to pay for this. I did not get a deal. This Malibu wine hike. And this is, um, they used to have uh, the giraffe there. And you could go on this like safari and meet the giraffe. Anyway, of course, they were caught up in the fires a couple years ago. And there was a lot of Hollywood drama that ties into it. Well, I got the whole scoop from the girl giving the wine tour of what really happened, what really went down, and kind of the sad aftermath from that um, unfortunate drama. That's going to be on Patreon, along with what, um, which comes out every Friday, HeatherMcDonald.net, along with when I met the hummingbirds. Yes. So after we went to the wine tasting, my friend and I, we went and had lunch at the Malibu Pier Cafe. They do not take reservations. It's a bitch to get parking, but super yummy food and fun also to do, kids. And then um, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to text Spencer Pratt, who has invited me to come over and meet the hummingbirds since I'm only about 15 minutes away. Um, so I'll get into that more on Friday's Patreon. But I was able to weasel my way in there and... I wore the hummingbird hat. It was a little bit like Hitchcock's The Birds. It was a little scary as I stood there like a statue, but um, a very fun afternoon. Okay. Also, big news this weekend, my best friend Jennifer Lopez turned 52, and everyone was wishing her a happy birthday from Leah Remini to Kim Kardashian to Heather McDonald, and I do have this one photo of J-Lo and I. I think I've posted it like four times in the last five years. <laughs> Um, and I wished her a happy birthday and I, I also let her know that I have some advice about she and Ben, which I've told you guys. So hopefully she's the juicy scooper. Don't make them dress like you. Don't make them start driving a Rolls or a Bentley. Let him wear his Boston sock shirts and, um, you know, don't try to go in business with him. So people were going crazy because JLo was on a yacht in Saint Tropez and so was A-Rod. Also in Saint Tropez, not on the same yacht. And she looks amazing and she does like a nice, thirsty little twirl around and someone's filming it. People think it's Ben's voice. To me, it didn't sound like Ben's voice. But anyway, whoever was filming it about how great it was. And then she did like a little series of photos. And the last one was them embracing. So we know that Ben was there. Then uh, it all came out from people. But I want to give this girl credit. She's a writer. Her name is Cassie St. Ong, O-N-G-E. I believe it came from her who originally said, I think that they are doing frame by frame of moments from Jenny on the Block video, uh, music video, and they're re- they're doing those exact same thing and they're going to put out the music video again featuring this. Well, because there was a photo of Je- um, Ben on the yacht putting his hand on JLo's ass while she lays on her stomach in a bikini. And that is one of the iconic scenes from the Jenny on the Block video, which is about Jenny from the Block being a big star. She and Ben are in the Bentley or whatever Rolls Royce looking at the Us Weekly and laughing. She gives him this watch. He also has been photographed wearing that same watch recently. Um, there was another photo where they're on the balcony and in, I don't know if this was from the video because I watched the video again, or if this was just one of those iconic photos that they got caught on a balcony and she appears to be wearing like a juicy couture pink, um, sweatsuit and they just did that same thing. And she was in a beast, uh, like a pink type of sweatsuit and he was behind her and, I didn't think anything of it because kind of that look that juicy couture, like sweat look is back right now. So here's what I think. So now people are like, is this a whole PR move? No, it's not. But J-Lo's not an idiot. Okay. She gets back with him and she's like, 
oh my God, you know what might be fun? Maybe it wasn't even her idea. Maybe the guy doing her hair, putting on her weave was like, oh my God, you should totally do like all the stuff that you and Ben did back in the day that then you mocked in your music video. And then we could, that's what I think happened. So while they're on the yacht, while they're on the balcony, while they're doing things, they're kind of in on it together. But do I think that they are 100% screwing? Yes, I do. Why the hell not? But while you're doing it, why not have some PR fun with it? So um, I absolutely agree. Now, I don't know if they're going to put out the video again or they're just having fun with us having fun. There's so many mystery things that we have to deal with with people's Instagrams and shit. It's just like we all have to be like detectives at this point. We're all Instagram detectives with these celebrities. And I'm telling you, I'm getting slightly exhausted by it. I really am. Just anyway, but God bless the people that actually catch these things. Um, I do want to say I feel bad for Jennifer Garner. She's just sitting in her Palisades home, you know, doing videos about trying to make bagels from scratch. Why anyone would bother to make a bagel from scratch at home, uh, pandemic or not, it sounds like a huge waste of time and a lot of carbs. And, you know, I don't know what's going on with her. I wished her that architectural, that green environmentalist architecture guy to come into her life. She did get some lawyer to come into her life. I don't know if they're still together. Um, But how annoying that your kids are hanging out with J-Lo's kids now and... And that you there and you're like, oh, it's it's, you know, oh, like they're like, oh, it's the other mommy Jen's birthday today. And she's like, we don't want to we don't really need to celebrate the other mommy Jen. OK, we don't. Um, I don't know if A-Rod's kids were on the yacht waving to J-Lo like, hey, remember us? We hung out for like two years together. I don't know what was happening. And who pays who pays for the yacht? Who pays for a big vacation like this where you bring your boyfriend, but you have a billion dollars? He has a lot of money, not as much as you, I don't think. Um, Do you just invite him and you're like, I got it? Or is he like, you know what? Let me just Venmo you 100 grand. Just like, we'll just call it an even 100 grand for for the boat and shit. Um, How does it work? Like, is it an uncomfortable conversation? Like, I have a friend who just went on a vacation with her long-term boyfriend. They're both successful. They're both divorced. And they had to kind of decide, like, okay, I'm going to get the plane tickets. You're going to get the the condo. I think that's pretty fair. I think that's, you know, they both are raising kids. I don't know how it works when you're that rich, you know. And then does even the really rich person get tired of it? Like, I, I picked up a lot, you know. I picked up, like, the last five yachts, the last three private planes, It's like, shit, can you get a penthouse weekend, please? Um, Okay, moving on. Latest in the Britney news. Okay, so her new attorney has recommended that Jamie Spears, the dad, gets removed and gets replaced by this guy, Jason Rubin. This is brand new news today. Uh, TMZ got the court docs. The um, court date for that is not till December 13th. He sounds like a great uh, successor to this. It's exactly what I said she needed. He's a CPA as well as an attorney, and I believe, because she also wants him to pursue civil harassment restraining orders against, I guess, some family members, maybe along with some other people. So, um, but this is exactly the kind of person I thought that she should have. Hopefully, her current attorney has really, you know, made sure that he's not a Tom Girardi. And and but that's what I think she needs, really more of a finance person to um, handle her business. And so, you know, of course, Jamie's fighting it. We'll see what, what happens there. Also in Jamie Lynn Spears, the daughter's life, she is she posted something kind of interesting. She said, Contrary to what people believe, no one's ever given me a condo in, I guess, this place called Destin Beach. And um, it's some quiet beach town in Florida. And Brittany had a condo there for many years. And she stated at one point, while she was getting 5150 would her family was enjoying themselves in this condo. And I guess it's quite large. You know, don't imagine like a one-bedroom condo. I think it's like a pretty nice place, but whatever they call it, a condo. And then there was some talk that she also gave Jamie Lynn Spears a condo. 
I don't know. And it's not weird to have your family stay in a condo that you're not using. But I think what hurt her the most is like they're, you know, playing on the beach while she's being 51 50 She brought that up in one of her statements. Jamie Lynn Spears' sister is saying this is not true. And whenever I go on vacation, I stay at the Ritz and she tags the Ritz and I always stay at the Ritz. Well, in her swipe by photos, I noticed that she featured a letter that when you go to high end hotels, you know, they'll say, welcome back, Heather McDonald, to the Monarch Beach Resort or welcome back to our Waldorf, meaning we've been to other Waldorf properties. We've been to other Ritz Carlton properties. This doesn't mean anything, really, but it just said, welcome, Jamie Lynn Spears and your family, not welcome back. So does she really stay at all the Ritzes? I don't think I know that there isn't a Ritz at this Destin Beach. So I don't really think that has anything to do with, do with it. But what I found the most interesting in her slideshow is she posts on her regular slide a photo of her husband shirtless, her in like a bra and underwear, pretty messy room, um, a two computers up, one is fuzzed out, and he's holding his phone. And you can clearly see in his phone that it is the post that Brittany had put it up on Instagram saying a quote from a book, like the first page of a book, about kindness. So I was like, interesting that she didn't fuzz that part out. Well, today when I went go back to look, she used that same photo on her stories, and this time she did block out what was on his phone, um, which was Britney's Instagram, and put, he's always working. First of all, I just hate it when people do that. I hate when people try to act like their husband's always working. Can't stop. Look at him go. The guy's looking at your sister's Instagram. That counts as always working. Whatever. I don't know why she didn't also fix that on her slideshow. I'm Again, I'm sick of the mystery, but I definitely think it was kind of like, I don't know what she's trying to say. I don't get... I don't know. She must have the same PR secret people that are helping her figure out her narrative as Erica Jane. I really don't think either one is doing a great job at it. Um, But there you go. Speaking of the pretty mess, she um, wished Dorit a happy birthday. Also, okay, let's talk about the Real Houses of Beverly Hills for a minute because you've probably heard a lot about it even if you didn't watch it. In this episode, they go to Kyle's beautiful house in La Quinta. And Erica shows up. She is not staying at the house. Now, I don't know if that's because she had a really bad period a couple years ago at Teddy Mellencamp's Camp's Laguna House and got a lot of shit for that because she didn't want to stay and bleed through the sheets. I don't know if she has her period anymore. I don't care. But the producers agreed to put her at the La Quinta Resort and Hotel. So she's there alone with her dog. And she rolls up in some sweats and some five you know, five-inch, you know, stiletto white pump heels with sweatpants, which is like a really popular look right now. And she cries a little. uh, I can't even remember where we are in real life back to, but it was bad. They froze assets, I guess, that day when they were filming this. They froze the assets of both of them. And Dorit's like, I really feel for her because PK had some business and lawsuits that that were happening and they froze my assets, even though the lawsuit, even though what they were suing him for happened before we were married. So I really feel for her. Well, none of this happened before you were married. He's been doing this throughout your entire marriage, whether you're aware of it or not, he was, and you are married and, you know, that means you'll both be sued. Sorry, that's what happens when you get married. Um, You're in each other's shit. So there you go. Um, So... She sits down and she goes on to say that he was losing it um, as far as like his mental capacity. And she says, remember when I talked about his car accident, how he broke his ankle? Yeah, but you said he was fine. Well, he wasn't. Um, For some reason, he was driving behind our house in these switchbacks and he crashed. How did he crash? He drove off a cliff. A what? He drove off a cliff and... I found him unconscious outside of the car with a broken ankle. I didn't hear from him for 12 hours. I didn't assume he was in a car accident. I assumed he was with another woman. Wait, what? He was with other women? Yes, he was. I caught him because when David Foster and Yolanda were getting divorced, I looked into Tom's phone. 
It was very easy because he had a Nokia flip phone from 1994, and he didn't know how to do a passcode. And all the evidence was right there. And I presented to him, and he said, well, what are you going to do about it, baby? And what am I going to do? But you're such a beautiful, strong woman. You have this great career. Why didn't you? You could have left. Really? What am I going to do? How am I going to leave the most powerful lawyer? Have you not heard of Betty Broderick? So then um, everyone's just like, wait, I don't understand about this accident thing. Really? Do I have to explain it to you again, Sutton? I got a call from Tom. I said, where have you been, baby? Cheating with the judge? Who else? The travel agent? The girl who cuts your hair that's non-existent? Who are you sleeping with, Tom? And he said, Erica, I'm outside on the switchback road and I've got a broken ankle. What? So everyone was very confused. Um, Clearly Sutton and her, I don't think, are the best of buddies right now. Um... Because we see this coming up week that she screams at her in a visceral way where she tells Sutton to shut the fuck up and don't ever, you don't ever call me a liar again. You call me a fucking liar one more time and you, you better watch out or what, or what, or what, Erica, or what. So it gets very scary. I was scared at home watching it from the TV. So this is what I think she was trying to say. If this is even a true story or not, because then they all these interviews came up and, of course, old footage. Look, she lied about her life for the last five years on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She doesn't she didn't have to put her hand on a Bible when she signed the contract that she was going to be 100 percent truthful about every single aspect of her life. And she lied about it and she made it seem like they were madly in love, screwing every night that, you know, he was licking whipped cream off her ass after Mikey put it there. They were acting like that. We know now it wasn't true, okay? She couldn't stand him. She thought he was a dick. She was staying in until he, she was going to hold his hand until he died so she could collect the money because she didn't think she would do well in a divorce, okay? Because he's a dick and he was awful to his second and first wife. So that's why she stayed. And But this is what may have happened. I think he got in a car accident. He was missing for 12 hours. After 12 hours, from when he drove home to when he woke up, it was maybe 12 hours, he gets out of the car, and in getting out of the car, he twists and breaks his ankle. Then he's laying next to the car, and he calls Erica, and Erica comes, sees that he's broken his ankle, gets some extra help, goes to the hospital, and gets his ankle fixed, but he's no longer unconscious when she finds him. And then she screen grabbed the Nokia you know, photos from the phone and saved it for a rainy day, which I think happens about a week after this, after she he shares it with um, Kyle, who Kyle was really like, if you've ever taken improv classes, Kyle was like throwing the ball for her to catch to make the story go along. Like, okay, we're going to get out about, you know, the car accident, the ankle, and that he cheated forever and that he had no remorse about it and how you found out. And so then when she threw it up on Instagram about the female judge who then got very upset and said that she doxed her and dox means that in posting those photos, she purposely or inadvertently left the judge's cell phone there. And that's very dangerous for a judge to have out there. The judge said, yes, I had the affair with Tom Girardi, but it was before I met my husband, who I'm now happily married to, but it was during the time that Erica was married to him. So, meanwhile, in other housewife news, Dorit is not having a great week. Uh, Page Six reported that Dorit and P.K. Kemsley reportedly owe $1.3 million in unpaid taxes. They also listed that beautiful farmhouse next to Kyle's in Encino for somewhere around $9 million. I think it's it's been reduced some. Or maybe it's been reduced down to nine million. They bought it for six something. They only lived there a year. Then they list it for nine. You can also lease it for seventy five thousand a month. Let me tell you something, uh, juicy scoopers who don't live in L.A. that have a shit ton of money and are thinking about coming here for a year and renting a house. For seventy five thousand a month, you can do a lot better than the nicest newest house in Encino. Okay. Take it from me, former realtor who lives in the Valley. $75,000 a month, you should be looking at water for sure, okay? Um, so I, I don't know who is going to be $75,000 a month. If you want to send me some comps, maybe 
if things have even gotten crazier in LA and I'm not aware, but 75,000 a month is a lot and you should get something better than Dorit's house in Encino. Just trying to give you a tip. Um, so anyway, the unpaid taxes, who knows what that is? This is, you know, also in Real Housewives news, a new Real Housewives of OC. Her name is Noella. She's very pretty. Her name's Noella Bergener. It has been confirmed. She is a Real Housewife. She is currently filming. Anyway, she and her husband, who don't own property, because why own property? You know, um, they uh, owe, according to this report, and to Reality Blurb, who wrote about it, uh, $5.8 million in back taxes. So they didn't pay for a couple years. And... Um, I believe it'll probably be on the show, which we like this shit. So you said you were bored by OC. Thanks for casting Noella. Again, I know it's baffling. Why do people go on the show when they didn't pay the taxes? As if that's not going to come out. As if once you become a public person, somebody is not just going to be like, oh, look what I found. You know, let me put it out there. Um, So anyway, they don't like a lot of people on the housewives don't pay taxes. And some people don't pay rent. So... According to Bronwyn's husband, Sean, they um, were hit with a lawsuit saying they owe $45,000 on back rent that they did not pay before he moved out of a house that is now being sold for $6.7 million. That's the house we saw on the show. Um, he then did a countersuit saying that by putting it out there that they owe this kind of money, it's hurting Bronwyn's reputation and her ability to work and that it's not her fault. He handled the finances, so she shouldn't even be in it. And he claims that, no, there isn't that much. Yes, there is some due, but it's nowhere close to 45000 The point is, again, you're married. You are married, okay? It doesn't matter if one person handles the finances and you make the money or vice versa. You're married. You're both going to be responsible for the fact that you guys both lived in this house together as a married couple. So I feel sad for the landlord who is out some money, but hopefully someone will buy her house and she'll be done with it. Okay, you guys, now I'm very excited to bring on my guest, my good friend, Josh Wolf. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a favorite from my life. From the comedy world, you guys, he has. it's been a minute since you've been to Juicy Skip, mm-hmm. however you've been here. Yep. I've got the world-famous Josh Wolf here. Wow. Famous well, comedian, yeah. musician, well, uh, thirsty comics, yeah, comic. Uh, uh, you, see, I oh, love- you threw up that ab shot like <laughs> a fuck, like, like a 24-year-old social influencer. Yeah. Like, wh- how? <laughs> like, you're coming across your phone, Josh. You saw this really good photo of yours, and it was really good because uh, you are a good-looking guy. You've always been a good-looking guy. <laughs> you're you're still good, and you're like, oh, you know what it was? I'll make a joke about it being really hot in Nashville, which it is, and I'm like, clever work, thirsty dad. Yeah, let me tell you exactly where that came from, and I, I this is why I appreciated it's your really, comments you know, so much. It's it's Josh on stage <laughs> with just. A really good torso, naked leather pants. Well, not yeah, yeah naked yeah. chest, leather pants. Um, and yes. let let me tell you, first of all, I appreciated that comment so much because yeah. out of all the people, what I did know, I say? You said uh, something like "way to go, thirsty dad" or yeah. something like <laughs> yeah. that. And, and so w- the reason I appreciate it so much is because you're probably one of three people I know that would have called me out on it. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I was like, that's right. Because what had happened was leading up to that picture, yeah. I've lost a little bit of weight. Yeah. You know, over quarantine, basically what happened was I didn't work out for a year. And at my age, yeah. it's just hard to put muscle back on. Right. Right. And it taken me so long. This is kind of my natural. Yeah. Right. So I lost my 15 pounds. So people, I've got a lot of meth jokes and a lot of, you know. Uh, is Josh okay? Yeah. A lot I of, got a couple of those too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is Josh okay? All this stuff. Which, by the way, to a girl, everyone gets like real excited. Like, are you okay? <laughs> You're like, do I look skinny? But to a guy, they're like, I'm like, oh, yeah. Shit. yeah. I'm like, guys, I'm yeah. just not 35 anymore. Yeah. That's it. So I can't put that weight back on. But I, yeah. so I had had so many of those I comments. I identify as 35, by the way. I do. do you, I can identify. we do that? Yeah, we can now because oh. of uh, Hilaria Baldwin. I mean, she, she really she, did open up the door yeah, for all of us, so, didn't yeah. she? I'm I'm age fluid. I'm going to be age fluid, yeah, too. Yeah. I'm going to stick it 
Is actually, that the age you would pick? No, 35? I'm actually I'm actually 38. Uh-huh. And that's my that is 38. my age. But then it because it's fluid. Mm-hmm. Then, like I said, like when I go move Drake into the dorms, I'm going to be you know 18 and a half that weekend. How old do you want him to tell people that you are? Um, oh, I don't care about that, but I play tricks on him where I make um, I we were going through Chick Fil A, yeah, and um, I was pretty buzzed as you do when you have your son pick you up from a party, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. and then you were like, as a treat, also I'm starving and drunk. Let's go through Chick Fil A, <laughs> and so the the girls standing out there, yeah, which is so weird. I'm like, why do we? When did that just start? That like they're like even though we have the Drive speakers, yeah. we're just gonna have humans now. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, great. Like I was like, all right. Yeah. So the girls hang out there, and she's like, "Hi, what can I get for you?" I'm like, "My boyfriend and I will have," and he's just like, and I'm filming it, and he's right. just like laughing because I've done that to him before. I'm like, what? Why wouldn't? Why not let the people believe? Yeah. What's wrong with it that I look this youthful? That and I go, Drake. Do you think they believed us? He's like, probably. And then now he does it. Now he's like, Do you think that person just is like, what's we, what's with that old he, cougar? And I'm like, Yeah, <laughs> we're golfing. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. My, I we I took my daughter once on a trip. We were going to do. I was doing stand up. Yeah. And when we went, are you stand up? Oh, I, I didn't I, know that. Yeah, yeah. You dabble in it. I dabble in okay, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We pulled into the rental car place, and. Um, the guy was like, uh, we're sitting at the counter, and the guy was like, you want me to get you a convertible for you and your lady friend? And my daughter was like, gross. Yeah. That's my dad. Gross. And the guy was like, that's your dad? And I was like, take it, where, take it where easy, Was this dude. in L.A., I assume? St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. Oh, good food for St. Louis. Well, um, definitely now, I mean, I was... I was in an elevator once, and um, I'm like, this is fucking disgusting. This is some Scott Disick stuff. And there's this guy there, and he, we were skiing. It was uh, in Mammoth, and he's with this girl that has a beanie on and long blonde hair. And, you know, she looks about 18 or what. You know, she looks about 20 maybe, and he was like 50. And I'm like, you know, just like gross. And he's like, Heather? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, no. he's, like, he's like, oh, hi. Is this, do you remember Alicia, Alexa, my daughter? And I was like, oh. Like, that was a father-daughter. And I just was like, there's some sick shit going on. You just on, assumed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, this is great, blah, 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 you know, yeah. Okay, so so Peter dies tomorrow. Oh. Okay. Oh, your <laughs> words to God's okay. Okay. okay, so Peter dies tomorrow. Yeah. What's the youngest guy you would date, and what's the youngest guy that you would just hook up with? Um... And, I, and by and the way, I'm great, not wishing you died that, tomorrow. And yeah. it's great that Peter's here. And, um, I, and I think there's a difference in age, by the way, but well, it's someone you would date and hook up with. I obviously have a very youthful looking, youthful Without persona. Yeah, yeah. And I identify as 38. So, but um, look, I'm down to bone and never see the person again, as so, people do today. Yeah. But in case I do like him, I don't want to be like a share bagel boy. That was the issue was the original Cougar right. or Demi Ashton situation where now, seven years in, it's all fun and games. Until I break a hip and he's still only 38. Right. And then it's just like sad and weird. Right, and right. he hasn't had a job for 10 years because I'm rich. <laughs> well, and now by the way, and now he doesn't know how to get out of it. it and do- then it's like, Heather, and then it doesn't I feel sound bad like that you I haven't thought body. of this before. But oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is a little too detailed for you. Like, oh, did you just think it? I'm just thinking of this off the top of my head. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say 42. 42. 42 is the youngest you would date. Both. Oh, both. Oh, maybe if it's like a Vegas thing. I heard Vegas is kind of coming back. I heard um, Yeah, I heard it is. Um, so I think if it's a Vegas thing, who the fuck cares? If it's like actually like going to a dinner with someone, it's got to be it's got to be over 40. I agree with you 100 percent on that. If, if yeah. Beth passed away tomorrow, right? Yes. The, the I, one thing that has happened between ages of 40 and 50. OK. Is this at 40. I was like, man, I could squeak by without a great conversation. Yeah. But. As you get a little older and your the sexual drive drops a little bit, you're like, I can't talk to you for more than ten minutes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, like I'm gonna need yeah, a conversation. That's why I think it's kind of interesting that I have noticed this happening a lot, where these guys that get divorced, you know, like let's say, um, I just remember Burt Kreischer when I did his show, he said something that I thought really told it all. He's like, he's been with his wife forever yeah. and they have a nice, beautiful family and everything. And we're just like talking about that. And he's like, I did this bit on stage and it like didn't really work that well. Like at the improv, I'm like, what was it? It's like pre-COVID, whatever. And he's like, 
you know, I I got this. I ordered this car. The car came. You know, now the car brokers can bring that. You know, and it's a you know, very nice car. Very excited to have it. And his wife's like, oh, cool. You know, whatever. And he's like, a twenty five year old would be like, I got a daddy. Yeah. Like they'd be all yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but she's been with you and yeah. she works her ass off like helping your business and like th- she's happy that you got a nice car, but like this isn't the first car. You've, you've had many new beautiful cars for the last 10 years as people our age who are somewhat successful are lucky enough to do. Yeah. So I'm like, but I get that. So then when the guy does get divorced at like 50 or what, 45 and, you know, they had to work very hard to get tail in high school. Yeah. In, still hard in college. They married their girl at 27. She's hated him for the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Now he's 45. <laughs> Half of his money's gone, but he still has a nice car and he has a few bucks. And a 24-year-old is pretty excited that this guy is going to take her to Mastro's yeah. and take her to Vegas. But I, I have to tell you, honestly, like right but now. Then, what I was gonna say, but then yeah. after that, then I've noticed after a couple years that same guy is dating someone that's like a divorced mom who's my friend. Have to. Because they have this, that, the same time, life, parenting. Oftentimes they want to date a, a fellow mom or parent because it's like yeah. I can't be with someone who can't relate that like my kids come first and blah, blah, blah. But also like your your fantasy of having sex with a 24-year-old is way better than the actuality of it because yeah. like – I'm imagining, first of all, I can't keep up with that kind of energy right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if someone was like, I'd like to fuck you all night long, I'd be like, that sounds terrible. Well, also, like, the, I'm good the, for one time yeah. in an episode of Friends, and then we are waking up tomorrow, you well, know? Well, also, these girls that are 24 have been working on being excellent at sex since they were like 12 what? and joined like porn. Oh, hub. because it's right in front of your it's face. It's right in front of their face. They've had learned all the tricks. I have not learned no tricks. I am a lazy lay of a pillow princess, and I would much rather, like, I, I would re- much rather go to a Korean spa and have and scrub the dead skin off of my, and like throw the bucket and see the dead skin go down. Yeah. Then like you know that's have exciting. Some crazy night. That's exciting. But first, I'll get the dead skin off of me, then have the crazy yeah. night. But just don't expect the crazy night every night. No, no, no. We're not at, every night. No, no. Yeah. We're, we're at an age like we're not I, every I, night. Special I, occasions. Special occasions. Save it up. A vacation. Yeah. Hotel sex. Hotel sex is fun. Yes. Yeah. Hotel absolutely. Se- Always. We we look forward to hotel yeah. sex. It's yeah. because it's like different and you know what? It just don't. Have you ever I mean? tried to get one last in before? Like a, like I just remember it'd be like eleven forty five, and Peter would be like, "It's eleven forty five. I go, "Yeah." He's like, "So we have to get out at 12. I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes. So like yeah. one last bone before yeah. we get home. Like let's get let's milk out this vacation <laughs> till the very very end. I like your style, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I paid for fifteen more minutes in this room, so let's get the last. Why do we leave early? <laughs> yeah. It's like well, the way I felt when I gave birth to Brandon. They're like, you're okay to go. I go. Uh, does my insurance pay for forty eight hours? I'm like, uh, bring that cranberry juice and ice and another ice diaper. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got two kids at home. I will be staying here. Yeah. I Peter, what time did I come in? Five oh five. Yeah, we're leaving at five oh five. Yeah. Two I, days later. What does my insurance pay for? Yeah. I would like everything, even every whatever it yeah. is on the list. Bring I'm like, that um, in. He, yeah, like when like we were that family that at the hospital, like, um, I'm not hungry, and then like whoever was there was like, um. Uh, I'll have that chicken. Like, yeah. It's like, what's well, not the four seasons? <laughs> Kaiser Permanente. Like, relax. I re- so when when I got my appendix out, yeah, the Don't uh, be the brack. Yeah. yeah, when I, you know, when you get your appendix out, do you do you have a flatter stomach? Do you get a little like snatched for a week or what? You get a little bloated? No, no, snatched. Oh, flatter. Snatched, like flatter. Well, I mean. I got a pretty flat stomach anyway, okay. so... Uh, so it didn't make a big difference. No, so you're, you don't think... I don't want to put it out there and give anybody ideas to go get their appendix taken out just, like, to look hot for an event or a hot girl summer. I have to tell you, maybe it gets a little swollen, but it only dropped down one side because oh. it's not... You know what I mean? Okay. So it's not doing the whole stomach. Okay. But when I went, and this is when, like, they said to me, you know, you're in bed, and they gave me one of those plastic jugs. They were like, look, so... Here's your jug. And so after surgery, you know, you won't be able to get up so you can pee in the jug. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I go, what about today if I just pee in the jug? And the guy was like, well, you can get out of bed and go to the bathroom, right? I go, yeah, but I got pee in the jug insurance. He goes, yeah. I go, I'm peeing in the jug. (laughs) 
And he was like, yes, like, he was like, I was like, I'm paying for this already. He's like, yeah, I'm like, I mean, gonna- this has kind of been your, <laughs> how many times have you been in bed? <laughs> you're, you're and then like, be- I have to pee. And then you're like, you're like trying to go back to bed. And you're like, Heather, just fucking you lazy pee bitch. Get the- up and pee. No, I think I can wish it away till the light sun comes up. Yeah, I'll buy no, it. I do that too. Yeah. right <laughs> yeah, next yeah. to you. Yeah. By the way, they have also, also for women, they have that thing. The decatheter catheter or? Where, no, no you. you it, oh, it's like a little funnel thing. Yeah. Yeah, fun. Yeah, fun. yeah. It looks like a, t- like a tinfoil hat yeah, kind yeah. of thing. And you just pee out of that. Oh. But like I said, I, whatever my insurance says I can do. Okay. Wow. I'm Good in for, for you. It. Yeah, I'm in for it. I. I I just want to get all my money's worth. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you haven't been sick for a long time. You're like, uh, yeah, you guys have made out like a bandit. Like, it, now let me just cash in. How many times in your life yeah. can you pee in a cup and have someone just be like, do you want me to dump this for you? You're like, yeah. I guess. Oh. That's why I put it in the cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess you can do that. Yeah, tr- uh, let's drop it off. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Have you had any major surgeries? Fortunately, no. Last time I was in the hospital was giving birth. I'm very lucky. This is really? butt. this yeah, is not wood, right. but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So no, I've been very lucky about All health right. and stuff. So um, I, don't I take believe... it for granted. I never take it for granted. Do you remember every birthday? What I would say. 43 and cancer free, 44 and cancer. Because I was like, yeah. people are only excited when they fought cancer. I'm like, shouldn't I be extra grateful that extra I never, gra- had, never it? had it? Yeah. I never had it. Do you know that was my storyline for my Fox? We both had deal at, didn't we both have a deal at Fox for our own it, sitcoms? Yes. You were at Fox too, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, that was my pitch of the pilot of that I was to say it's my and that my young son Brandon because it's based on my life uh, Josh and I both got sitcom deals when we were at Chelsea lately about like sitcoms based on our lives and I was like um, oh you know I, I wrote this bit where like my my son would be like how old are your mom and I'd be like 42 and cancer free and then he goes to school and he's like it's my mommy's birthday and the teacher's <laughs> like how old is like 42 and cancer free and so then she's then the school is like, oh, my God, I didn't know she was a cancer survivor. And then they hire me to do, like, a hosting thing, a cancer thing. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I, you know, oh, shit, you know, but, like, I'm still really grateful I don't have cancer. You know, anyway, they all loved it. And then the top person is like, we did a pilot a couple of years ago about a woman who was getting free casseroles pretend, pretending she had cancer. And it was did so poorly in the focus group that we just cannot even, like, joke really? about cancer. And so then the story that we did, oh, my God, I'm just remembering. Okay. Okay, the story that we actually did, which is in my book, My Inappropriate Life, Mm -hmm. which I still think, no pun intended, this is still appropriate for today. But this was a a true story that happened where um, Drake was – it was like to do a a portrait – and he did a, a self-portrait. He did a portrait of a girl. And so I saw it. I'm in the story. I make it that the teacher was concerned. But I see it. And I'm like, do you see yourself as a girl? You know, like, and um, anyway, no, he wasn't paying attention. He copied the girl next right, to right, him. Right, That's, right. we find out That's that funny. the end. But I go through the whole thing. And I'm very positive about it and everything. But it was comical yeah. and now of course we know it's not comical and it's not anything to make fun of and you can't make fun of it and nothing like that but then it was a genuine thing that's the one they chose and that was only like eight years ago that could never be a storyline today in a sitcom that it's so crazy because it's a um, the story isn't about that in particular the, the, the what makes it unbearable yeah. isn't even what the story's about this is one of the things with comedy that gets me a little bit yeah it's like the subject matters. Yes. Or you can't even touch the subject matter. Or if you're telling a story yes. that has the subject matter in it, but it's not what the story's about. Yes. Like that story clearly is not about that topic even at all. No. And my whole point of view was like, this is awesome. Yeah. 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 I have my yeah, girl yeah, now. Yeah. He already has my face. He's going to look just, you know, she's going to look just like me yeah, now. Yeah. I took them down the, you know, all this stuff. And then in the end, you know, I'm like, oh, he's just. He's just a distracted cheater. Like, it's fine. Yeah. You know, like, he was cheating on the thing. But that's and, a real... Yeah. Y- you know, so I did a, you know, maybe my biggest bummer ever. I had a deal at... Do you Hollywood know, bummers. Do you know... With Josh Wolf. <laughs> Do you know one of my table reads for one of my pilots, network yeah. table reads, you know, Ryan Reynolds 
read as my brother. Oh, nice. Uh, this was back. So two, remember two guys, a girl in pizza place? Yeah. So the people, the showrunner for that was a guy named Kevin Abbott. Yeah. And Kevin was also the showrunner for my show. And so we yeah. were doing a table read for ABC. And this, you were going to shoot the pilot? Well, we were doing a table read to just see if we were going to shoot the pilot. Okay. All right. And so, so that's it was about, it's very it, far in the process for people. Busy Phillips. Yeah. yeah. It was busy. Ryan Reynolds and whoever the cast was, he got yeah. that cast. So I was just like, well, this show's going. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, what's happening? And not only that, by the way. And now what year is this around? Oh. Is it before Chelsea or in between? Or Oh, before Chelsea. Okay, yeah. Be- it was before Chelsea because it was. Chelsea Lately, that is, you guys. And it was a show that ran on <laughs> It was a pop culture <laughs> hot bed of fun <laughs> from 2007 to 2014. Do you Go know, on. though, that, so the pilot, epi- the pilot story in that was a real, initially, it was a real story about me being at a mall and getting thrown out. Because at the time, when I was single raising those kids, the men's rooms didn't have changing stations. Right. And I wasn't changing them on the floor in a department store or any of that. So I used to have to ask women, hey, can you see if the it's empty in there and can you stand by the door and let me just change him real quick? Yeah. And so it was in Burbank and it was at – I forget which store. Because for people I don't know, Josh – and I want to get into that too after. Okay. But Josh, when I met Josh, he uh, – I don't know if you had your son yet, but you were dating yes, your son's mother and yeah. she had two small children yes. and then you guys had your son together. Yes. And then we'll get into that, but since she left. So you were you had a a period a long period of time in which you were the sole parent raising these three little yes. kids as a struggling comic. Yes. So this is what your pilot was based on. Yeah. And, okay, so tell finish the story. And Go so on. I ended up getting thrown out because there was one woman who – there was a woman who was working century for me and the other woman just walked right through and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm just changing my kids. And she was like, I have to use the bathroom. I go, I totally get it. I go, you know, the stall's open. We're not looking. I'm almost done. I just got to – and look, I get it. If She obviously felt like this is the women's room. Yeah. That's so why I get it. But she went out and got security. Yeah. She was the original Karen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, look, you'd be done with your pee already if you – it's not like I've never heard someone pee before, you know? Yeah, yeah. But so they came in and the guy – I was like, I got to finish changing the kid. He was like, you know – he he was like, I, I don't want to have to cuff you for being in the women's room. This is going to be embarrassing. Can you just – Get this done with, and let's yeah. get out of here. And they escorted me out of one on each arm, escorted me out of the mall. Where was the kid? I was with my son, and you know I had him in the baby Bjorn. Oh, and, and my and my baby other two, wearing the, yeah, the other two, my other two kids were like, "What's wrong? Are you getting arrested?" I'm like, oh, "No, I'm not getting they're arrested." Like crying, yeah. yeah, they were like, "Are you getting arrested?" I'm like, "No, but that'd be pretty cool if I got yeah, arrested because yeah. then I could be away from you guys for a day." Yeah, but, yeah. but that, but they, um, when I was doing this early on, when I would pitch real stories like yeah. that. The network's note was always like somewhere along the lines of this feels so sad. Well, you know, one of their notes was, <laughs> can we have the mom live down the street? I'm like, no, that's not the story. Right. Yes. And they're like, but it seems so sad. I'm like, but you do single mom stories all the time. Yeah. Why is it so sad that it's me? I remember with – um, so I had two network deals for my own show. The first one was right when I was 30. And um, and it was about me, like, graduating from college and helping my parents do real estate with these, like, loser li- siblings, kind of, you yeah. know? And I had these two brothers, and that's the way I pitched it, you know, these two brothers that were, like, 40 and, like, kind of like stepbrothers. But this was even before the movie Step Brothers came out. This was right after 9-11. And it was very funny, like, how, like, lame and, like, unambitious they were. And then they, like, were trying to, like, sell real estate. And they, everybody in the pitch meetings loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Then the, then we go with the people to, that's going to buy it. And they're like, can we combine the two 40 year old brothers <laughs> into one 18 year old brother? And I go, why? And they're like, I just think it's pretty sad that like a middle-aged guy is, to, is living like this. I'm like, that's the point. That's the funny that's of it. That's the whole story. I go, an 18 year old living at home is not a loser. That's called like, a high school fuck? senior. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's what he's supposed to be doing yeah Yeah. there's some of those notes and by the way (laughs) some of the notes and i'm not going to mention the show or the network because i don't want to get anyone in trouble but i used to work on a couple of shows that were um predominantly black black sitcoms right sitcoms yeah. yeah and um so one time this was a note from the network they were like something good would happen to the 
the the people on the show. Yeah. And then the network note was, can we just, when they get the good news, can they start dancing? And now, so the, the head writer was a black guy and really funny dude. Uh-huh. And he goes, let me just see if I got this note right. <laughs> Something good happens to the group of black people in real life. And their reaction is that they all break out and start dancing. <laughs> and, they get in the, I'm like, and the network person was like, yeah, that's probably not a good note. And he was like, that's a bad note. That's a bad note. That's not what they're doing. Like, w- I heard some network notes on these shows that were cr- absolutely crazy. But I will tell you, maybe I, I, I didn't work with too many terrible people. Yeah. But there was one show we worked on where the person was just, it was like that typical Hollywood where you're like, oh, this is. Oh, this is Chelsea Lately? No, no, no. Just uh, kidding. Go and, on. It was, um, and look, she, she maybe she's a nice person, and I, and I think that yeah. when you're younger, and you f- and you're an actress, and you're hot, and that's is what you're known for, and it starts to slide away with age. You mean? Yeah, I think it's you, all about your looks, and yeah, I think you start to get a little desperate. Yeah, and so I don't know if Shannon Elizabeth is a better person now, but on that show we were on, yeah. She was a flat out, like there was a younger, more attractive, better, funnier actress who came and guest, did some guest stuff. God, I barely even remember who that is. I have to like look her up. But that Shannon name Elizabeth? Her, yeah, the name is She was is on her, American she, Pie. American Pie. And she was getting a lot of stuff just thrown to her. Yes. Yeah. She, I, I don't want to. Okay. So there were times where we would write for her mm-hmm. and we would write a punchline and someone would be like... She's not gonna be able to deliver that. Let's have her make a funny noise. And so, <laughs> and so she would make a oh or something funny like it, <laughs> because she, she wasn't a comedian. She, she wasn't, wasn't a comedian. Yeah, I think that's like and she in and, and the, the what she she should have been nicer to the people that she, she just wasn't. And then I think that stuff comes back and haunts you. You know when you your also, talent yeah. or your or your star dims. You know, if you're an asshole, we all know comics. I know comics who I've heard club owners say to me, I can't wait for him to stop selling tickets so I can stop booking him. Because he's just so unpleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's a gazillion people to work with. Yeah. And so unless you're selling me more tickets or unless you're in a movie and you're a box, then, then I could just get somebody nobody knows. Okay, so he, but he, in in our day of like selling shows about our lives, and we were not strangers to TV. We were on TV and stuff. Um, I think with the deal that I had, the second deal about my f- being a mom, I was I definitely said I'm not even going to pursue this if you start to say that you're going to get Jolie Fisher or something. No, no problem with her. Like I love her, but like you know, because the first time when I was 30, they were like you will not be starring in this, yeah. you know, because you're a nobody and whatever. And I'm like, okay, they're like, maybe you can play the sister, but you're going to have to audition to be the sister, but you cannot be the lead. They're like, you know, we're hoping to get Sherry O'Terry or whatever. And I was like, all right. Oh and I'm like, but Sherry is like, oh but I remember God. going, but if you're doing this for Sherry O'Terry, like she's five feet tall and I'm five, nine. So I'm not going to be her sister, Yeah, but Okay. Whatever. Hopefully it'll go, and I just get a check in the mail, and I don't. And this show doesn't even look like my family anymore. Who cares? Anyway, it didn't go. But, um, but with that, I'm like, okay. But recasting. But why Heather. do they always put the same people? Is it because they are comfortable and they know that that person can hit the mark and learn their lines and everything, even though it's not a, like really it's, like hold your gut funny, but they can be like coffee. Fu- I like to call it like morning coffee, like morning coffee funny. It's exactly right. It's yeah. the seven out of ten. It's basically all right. People are going to watch a seven out of ten. A ten out of ten gets me accolades, gets me awards, yeah. but I got to risk. People who hit a 10 out of 10 risk. Yes. They risk failure. And most people are scared to lose their jobs and they're not risking right. failure. So they're going to go. Let's push what, for the person that's been the mom in 14 what sitcoms. Works. Yeah, yeah. What works. Yeah. Look, I had a show. I sold a show to NBC. Yeah. Jim Burroughs as the director. Jamie Tarris's Rest in Peace. Yeah. As the EP. Right. And I was like, this is a no brainer. And, and what we, was this about again? This my, my life. Right? Yeah. And we went in. Pitched it, NBC buys it. And I'm like, yep. And then the next meeting with NBC, they were like, who do you see playing Josh? I'm like, what? 
I was like, what about, and they were like, no, yeah, but, but not you, but who do you see actually playing Josh? And I was like, oh, they snuck that one right past Did me. you think of Sylvester Stallone? Yeah. <laughs> That's like the classic story where he's like, nope, I'll finance it myself and direct it myself and do it myself and blah, 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 which is really admirable, especially back especially then. Especially back then. Yeah, yeah. When you go back, you know, when you watch so wait, that, what happened? Oh, I ended up saying, obviously this show didn't go. Uh, because you said it has to be me or I, did you say I'm okay with someone else doing it I said I'm okay but I wasn't and yeah. so when we just kept going back and talking to them I was like I just don't understand like you guys, I mean I understand surrounding me with good or people that you trust but this is my voice and this is my story and we're talking about my life right. it'd be different if I wrote an office a story yeah. about it I'm not personally attached to that and right now by the way yeah. I could give a shit Right now, who cares? right now, where's the check? Yeah, who's playing me? Great. Yeah, you got Cedric the Entertainer as me. That's cool. Perfect. Yeah, That's totally. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally good with any of that. The yeah. check still cashes. I don't give a shit. But yeah. back then, you know, when you were holding on to your art a little bit, yeah, you're like, this is my story. Yeah, yeah. That looking back, I made a couple of those errors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I. So yeah, the, for the first one, where I was the young girl, I I accepted it, and when it didn't go, I was like, all right, you know. Um, I remember they said, okay, Les Moonves has the script. He's reading it this weekend in Malibu. He really likes it, and they're gonna give it to Sherry O'Terry, and you know, and she didn't she didn't like it. By the way, when Sherry O'Terry didn't like it, and you're like, that? No, but she she was, <laughs> she was like at the top of her Oh, rate. she was. So they, and they said, and just to not make you feel bad, they presented her with like four others, and she's passed on every yeah. single one, and even though they gave her this big chunk of money. Now, this is what they told me. Um, Sherry, if I see you, you can, you probably don't even remember the dumb real estate <laughs> script. But like, you know, I was just like, oh, okay. So then that was it. Who would you want playing you right now? And I remember the ne- that day, I'm like, oh, so Peter, they didn't pick the show up, so let's get pregnant. <laughs> that was it. I literally <laughs> threw away my pill that yeah. moment. I wow. was like, yeah. And then I got pregnant. Like, I was like, didn't even have a period. Got pregnant right away. But I was, I was kind of holding out for, I was like, well, I'm not going to get pregnant. You know, which, if I'm going to be doing this show. Which kid can thank that? Drake. Okay. <laughs> Drake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you break out that script and be like, you see this, buddy? <laughs> had this gone. And if this had been any better, you would not be around. <laughs> <laughs> if, if this was a little funnier, I, we wouldn't be talking right now. <laughs> I remember there was, I was doing a show once and some extra was like telling me like tales from sitcom Hollywood. <laughs> and By the way, the extras have... All the scoop, but I don't even know if this is the right Great scoop stories. because now this was a friend story. Now watching the Friends reunion, I'm like this whole time I'm like I don't know if that person was right. Basically, they said that there was the the girl that ended up playing Ross's wife who left him for a woman, yep. which also ahead of its time storyline, along with the surrogate C that yeah. Lisa Kudrow did, which I loved. Um, she was like up for the part or got the part or something before they could get Jennifer Aniston out of her shitty sitcom pilot. Like, cause she already had one and they were hoping to get her. And so in the meantime, they like had this girl tapped and she was pregnant and she's like, I have to tell you I'm pregnant, you know? And they're like, okay, sorry, we can't give you the part. This is what the extra told me. And then she had the kid and then they did bring her back occasionally as that, but the person that I was having lunch with at that commissary and at Warner Brothers, or whatever, was like, and I just wonder, like, does she ever, as the show continues every, every day, year, look at that kid and be like, you came too soon, little shit. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. What? Every day, because the truth of the matter is, I could have had another kid and loved him just as much as I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? You don't know. Maybe I would have had a better kid because I'd have been wealthier. Right now. And yeah, would've... right now, I'd be like, I've got smart water and... Irritated eyes and oh <laughs> God, I was disturbed about how Maddie Perry looked, but I love him and we are friends. I'm here with Josh. Listen, Josh. Okay, Listen, so what what is your biggest Hollywood regret? Is it that you insisted on playing yourself for that part? What is it? Or do you have several? Oh boy. That you started to tell me one before we started, and I was like, save it for the show. That was a big one. Yeah. That was a big one. Do you think if right off the bat you would have said, oh, my God, Ryan Reynolds, or, oh, my God, you know, some guy around your age that's no one's as cute as you, but someone that's like just a tear 
less cute? I would you wish you had done that? Like just thrown out like a solid um, sitcom story. Elon Gold. Yes. Yeah. By the way, what a great. I don't know how many people listening know who you're talking about, but it might be the best example. Because he's someone that got a pilot. Every year. Every year. Every, just like Jennifer Aniston. Just like Leo He Remini, played the same role got a pilot every year. Every year. This dude, Elon Gold. I, I remember it. reading Leah Remini's book and she's like, I had done 33 pilots and to be four Queen of, uh, King, King of Queens. And, you know, so you can imagine what I've been through. I'm like, 30. You got 33 pilots. Like, I never got one. Yeah. I'm supposed to feel bad that your pilot didn't become a seven Every year series. Every time I walked into an audition and I was, and I, you know, I want to be a Scientologist. I we, was like, maybe they know the trick of me they booking do, something. They do, which is just staring into each other's <laughs> eyes and repeating their names. Every time I walked yes, into an Josh. audition, exactly, <laughs> Heather. I always think that's so interesting when someone does it. Heather, and I've just met them, like I'm interviewing, it's two minutes in. Heather, you have no idea what happened. I'm like, oh, that is kind of. That is kind of nice. Yeah, it draws you in. You're yeah. like, did you just say my name? Yeah. Okay, go on. Um, the oh, Elon, I would walk into auditions because I'm sure you saw the same people over oh, and yeah. over again, right? The same ten or fifteen. Heather he, Page Kent, now he, Heather Dubro of Real Houses. Of oh, is that right? Sometimes I'd see her. Sometimes I'd fa- find out that she did get the part, which she then loved because when she got on Real Houses of OC. People were denying that she had any success in acting, and I'm like, "Uh, no." She like, had all my roles. Yeah, she yeah. Gets, yeah she got a lot of sitcoms for like three years. Elon the Gold. other Heather is what I'd call her. Yeah, the, Elon Gold was my nemesis, and when yeah. I walked into that audition room, I was like, and he had no idea who I was. Yeah. I would look at him and be like, "This dude is kind of," and he does he, voices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that was a huge regret for me. You know, I have a regret even though I got to do the Josh Wolf show. So let's talk about that. Okay. So there are a couple things with that. Yeah. One, I wish, including Chelsea lately, yeah. I wish I had appreciated moments more. Yes. Yeah. Because when you look back, Heather, at that seven year ride, there was a two or three year period. Where that show, I think, was even bigger than I knew or realized at the time. Yes. It, it was like a really important pop culture show. Yeah. And different. She was important. Yeah. For what she uh, was basically the the only woman in late night and how yeah. she spoke. And there's a lot of women and how they speak on stage who can probably thank her a little oh, bit. Oh, definitely. For, right? I feel like that's whatever. Yeah. Everybody went for that, like the younger comments. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, there, you know, and I would argue also, like as far as shows that have done things for comedians. Oh, yeah. Carson, her, and Rogan. Yeah. Are th- Right? That's it. I think so. Yeah. Think it, was, so. it wasn't at midnight. It wasn't, it wasn't. It, it wasn't David Spade's show no. um, that came after that with a lot of people that we right. worked on, and it was fun. But like you know, but what was what I always said? What was great is that she. We started, you know, because I was there from day one. You came in like year two. You were always on it. You were always on the panel from day right. one. But then you became a regular writer and cast member and all that a couple of years in. But. We, you and Chelsea had history. We had history, yeah. you know, and then we started to party and hang out. So it was like, let's talk about last night or let's talk about Saturday night. And that's the cold open for Monday in which Chelsea had a pool party or you had a birthday party or whatever. Someone had a wedding and that was like the entire show. And they would literally go, we're going to move the panel around so that the three people that went to the party are on the panel and we barely are even get to topics and so they got to know our personalities. And then along with her being like, Josh, where are you going to be this weekend? You know? Yeah. And so then when you'd go, they knew that you were a dad. They knew you, you know. So that's what was so good. It wasn't just being funny on a set. Like, they knew that, that Joe Coy was a single dad. They knew I was married. Like, everyone, they kind of knew it, us. It, was, it yeah. was, you know, what that show gave me such a great example of. And in, in moving forward and things, whenever yeah. I would pitch something, I'd be like, guys, if you're in a room, I know you want this packed with stars but if if that show if Chelsea Lady can show you anything is that people don't care about the stars right show me people chemistry that, chemistry people that I can look at it's just like friends when you watch yeah. friends you're like I'm Joey oh I'm a, you know what I yeah, mean yeah yeah people at home related to you people right. at home related to me like and 
she, what was smart about that show is she never doubled up. There weren't two Heathers. Right. There weren't two people with your voice. Right. Like well, that, there isn't anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do remember that moment though when Tom, rest in peace. No, just kidding. He's alive. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but when Tom, our EP, was doing Ross's show. Yeah. Ross had like a one night a week like yeah. Chelsea lately spinoff talk show thing. And he goes, hey, um, you know, we want to – we're working on the Ross show. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes – and we kind of want like a regular, you know, sidekick for him. Do you – we need a younger Heather McDonald. Do you know a younger Heather McDonald that is like you? Yeah. But younger. And you were like, I identify as 32. Exactly. I said <laughs> hello. But no, I just go – and that was pretty shitty because I had actually done a pilot with Ross, and they said we just want Ross. Heather, when they but anyway, I said when, uh, there is no other one. This but, is it. But thank you. When CMT if I canceled find one, my show, she can play my younger sister. Yeah. CMT canceled my show two weeks later. So you did this talk about it. you did a CMT. So right after Chelsea Lately, you already had yeah. a a schedule in place of that you're going to have this like fun talk show on yes. the Country Network um, with pop culture, comedy, interviews, stuff like that. So yeah, and and, yeah. and and just to jump forward and I'll get back to that. Yeah. But when they canceled my show two weeks later, in the breakdowns, yeah. CMT was looking for a Josh Wolf type. And I was like, do, do you mean the dude you just canceled? <laughs> do you want me to call I was just on your network two Oh my god. Two, two weeks ago. Josh Wolf have, type. Josh Wolf type and a younger Heather McDonald yeah, are like, going on the road, you guys. <laughs> Just tickets. I was like, yeah. so not actual Josh Wolf, just some a Josh Wolf type. Got it. Yeah. But that show, okay. Well, that means you made it. I remember this guy said that to me years ago. When he they goes, say Heather McDonald he type. Goes, Heather, one day you're going to look in the breakdowns, which I don't even know if breakdowns even exist anymore. You're going to look in the breakdowns and it's going to say Heather McDonald type and that's when you know you've made it. Or you're, or you're, or you're past your prime. But I will, yeah. I will say, I believe that's a Tracy Ellis Ross story that it said – for, and I want to say it was for Blackish, but it might have been for the show that she did between Girlfriends and Blackish, where she played a couple with I forgot who who her husband was, but um, Jamal Warner I think was her husband. Anyway, I, I heard her in an interview, and it said a Tracy Ellis Ross type. Yeah, and she was like, "I would like to do the yeah. show." Hello? Can I audition yeah. for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. It's it's funny. So the the Josh Wolf show, like I'm just like you. Yeah. Growing up, you had that dream. I want to have a show called, right? Yeah. I had always told my parents, I would like to have a talk show. Yeah. A late night talk show called The Josh Wolf Show. Right. And. Did you have a vision board? Growing up? And and, and now. I, I, <laughs> now. You bring out a ju- vision board. Yeah. It just says juicy scoop on it. <laughs> Go on. I, I have a, uh, I never had a vision board, but I do believe in repeating things over and over again that you want. Yeah. So I, you, if you, you see say me, it, yeah, if you say see it me, out loud, mm-hmm, if you see me talking to myself in my car, that's just me saying over and over again, the things that I want. Oh, okay. Right. And um, say it out loud. Yeah. Say it out loud. Don't hide it. No, I, I Don't try be to shy about it. talk it into existence. Now yeah. the, the jet has not still, I've been talking about the jet for 30 years. I, oh, really? I still don't have a jet. <laughs> Have you but, gone on jet suites? It's pretty nice. It is actually pretty nice. Yeah, and pretty I've nice. been on a jet. So okay, I yes. feel like I'm halfway there. Yes. I, so I got the, I'd always wanted a jet. And so I got it. And my dad was like, I remember him saying, how often do people get to say, this is my dream and it happens. Yeah. He said, make sure you appreciate it. Yes. And so not only did I not appreciate it, but the one thing I learned from that show and basically every other show is that uh, you just got to go down with the, with the, captain's hat on yeah the worst thing is to have something fail as in the titanic yeah exactly (laughs) don't be like the italian guy who like jumped off that boat remember when that boat like like crashed no one died but it like crashed and then he like left and he jumped yeah 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 you gotta we gotta wait a little bit it's (laughs) yeah (laughs) but for me what that means is i don't ever want to have something fail and not feel like i got all of my ideas in yeah because then if i get all my ideas in and it fails Whatever. Right. But for me to go, man, I should have, I didn't, yeah. if I had done this. And I, that, 
And so you felt like you did or you didn't? I didn't. I felt oh, like I didn't. didn't. I, I didn't feel like I did. And I also honestly yeah. – so I took Jacob to work with me every day. Yeah. Which was great. Your son. My son. And we had a great time. And, and he, how old was he when, he, when you were doing that? It was the year before he was going to college. Okay. So, uh-huh. And so – and we didn't do any pop culture. We just did like weird news stories. Yeah. I didn't interview any celebrities. In the interview spot, it was basically a spot where people came on and t- taught me how to do things I didn't know how to do. Yeah. It was just like Josh doesn't know. So we just yeah. had – like we did stunts. Um, we had it – we had a guy light me on fire. We did. Um, Jesus, I'd always wanted to, to try st- stunts. Okay, so we got we did like stage like a bar fight. Okay. We had Joe Coy came on. You know, so a guy slammed me through a table, and then they set up all the fake glasses on the bar, and they dragged me down the bar and knocked yeah. all the. Joe Coy came on and played an, uh, a, a super villain and lit me on fire. Uh-huh. Like it was just weird fun. Yeah, but I wish I had. I have a lot of regrets for going. Going home at six o'clock because I had such a great day. I'm like, man, I should have been last dude out of the office. There's a lot of, yeah. There's a lot of time, a lot of things where I felt like I just. My biggest regret in general with my job is I feel like I'm great at getting things to eighty five percent of the way. Yeah. And then it's that last fifteen percent that really makes it something special. That last little part is where I feel like I'm. And so how like, many, how long did you guys do it for? Only six weeks. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, we'll let you know if it gets picked up. And did you think it would? Or then, or you we, knew at, at the end of six weeks it wasn't coming back? We all thought it was coming back. Mm-hmm. We all, the show itself was really fun. And, mm-hmm. and I knew how to do that panel thing. Mm-hmm. Like that wasn't a, so I, we all thought okay, it was Okay, well, back. it's interesting because there was one criticism I had for the show. I can tell you I know what it is. No, it was that you said too often, I can't believe I have my own show. Yeah. And I remember going... I appreciate that you're appreciating the moment and that you're like pinch me and grateful and all that. But then I'm like, there's also a part that you have to be like, of course I have my own show. Why wouldn't I? You know? So like who else would have it? That change, that exact change you're talking about yeah. is one of the things that is – and I've really – this has taken me a few years. Yeah. But it's been – one of the things that I feel like that 85%, Yeah, that's what it is. It's – Look, you can be humble, and yes. but you also have to have an inherent belief confidence, in who you yeah. confidence. Yeah, and I do, but I've never spoken it. Right. Right. So instead of speaking that confidence, I speak the humility. Yes. And it just is a it to me. It's that difference that between right. the eighty five percent and the hundred percent. And I agree with you. Like I feel like I should have the first couple shows been like, yeah, man, I'm really excited to do this. But then I should have stood in it. I actually did that once a little too early in my career. Did you? <laughs> I'm just remembering it. Which one? It was, I did like an after show during, for like, um, on E, like an Oscar after show. And they came and were like, to my people, we want to put Heather under contract for two years to do all these after shows and things like that. And Is this um, pre-Chelsea lately? No, this during. Yeah. Like during Chelsea. So it wouldn't have conflicted. It would have been like a really good, right. like... You know, and of course the money sucked and whatever, but who cares? You know, we were, the money always sucked. And um, and then I had managers at the time, you know, that were like, oh, we're going to demand this and that and whatever. And um, and I, I'm at a party and I think I see the e-executive that's putting it together. And he's like, what's going on with this contract? You know, and um, he's like, you know, Kelly Osborne signed for two years, no problem. And I go... I swear to God. Yeah. I go, um, I said this. This is a little too confident. I go, uh, I'm not Kelly Osborne. I'm Heather fucking McDonald. Uh. <laughs> and they're like, hey, yeah, that contract went away. Like, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> then the show, then the, Chelsea ended. They, E has yet to bring me back. Yeah. <laughs> Never have done one thing on E since. And now I will say, no, I'm Heather fucking McDonald. Yeah. And I and I had this moment where I did this like Zoom thing. Peter was there. It was hilarious. I agreed to do this Zoom thing for a network show. And, you know, thank God my son and his three friends were there. I literally had, it was like, I had a camera. I had to do a camera. They're like, you have another iPhone camera? Another one? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, if I was alone, there's no way I could have yeah. done the whole thing. And then, um, and I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. And they, and my, my, um, the boys, the teenage boys are like, 
so, and what are you getting paid for this? I go, I'm not getting paid. Welcome to being a female comic boy. <laughs> and they're like, this is what it's like to be a celebrity. And then the guy goes, oh, hey, hot mic. I go, I don't fucking care. Yeah. I go, you could hear this. I go, I'm so bummed. Like, I was like, this is ridiculous. I tried to get out of it. And then they're like, please. And the guy's like begging me. He's like, can I just talk to your son one more time to hook this up? <laughs> Because I was like, this is too hard. And, um, but no, I kind of, I was, I was like that. And I'm like, no, I don't need to do this anymore. I don't really care. And like, you know, I'm not going to tool around town yeah. and like beg anymore. Thank God, because we built this. But like, yeah, it was probably a little premature at that party. To, to be, to, to be, Cosmos put in. your foot down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, listen, the, the thing also, and I. Working with Tom and Brad on that show, yeah, was great for those me. are our EPs, EPs and writers, yeah. Yeah. And, and that was it was great for me. Yeah, and and it's not fun. like it's not like they didn't let me do what I wanted to right. do. Right, I just I, I would do it differently now. Just I'm more, I know who I am now. Yes, you know who you are. More. Every time, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes things come, but by the way, premature I've, a little before it's time. I've always envied. Envy's not the right word. Respected in you, how much you know who you are. Oh, that's nice. I, you know, and, and I've always respected not only that, that you are unapologetically who you are. Aww. There is so – and to me, like, that – it's true. Like, there's there's a there's a courage and a, a, a certain amount of bravery you have to have to be that person because when you're unapologetically yourself, here's two things that are going to happen. Mm-hmm. One, when people are truly unapologetically themselves, they are – an ex- extreme is not the right word, but you are a person. Right. So you have definite ideas, thoughts. You're not wishy washy. So when you have definite ideas and thoughts, you've picked a side, so to speak. And so there's going to be people on the other side who just inherently for who you are are going to say bad shit about you. Right. And you have to have the courage and the and the confidence in yourself to know that's going to happen and not alter who you are. Mm -hmm. And for you to do that, you've always been that person. Like I've always been. I've I've. I've tried to be that uh, in the very beginning of stand up it was harder. Yes. Because at that time it was like the grunge era. Yeah, and I'm talking the, about like TV you know, with Chelsea and right, all that. Right, but then I'm saying but then I think becoming a mom gave me more confidence. Yeah. Because it was like back then where I'd like second guess myself and be very stressed when I saw the other competition going into the same auditions and you know, doing stand up and being like, oh, I don't really fit the Sarah Silverman mold yeah. who's getting all the parts. You know, she, I'm not Jennifer, you know, Janine Garofalo. I'm like this sorority girl, blah, blah, blah. And not until like after I became a mom or around there was I just like, you know, that's always going to be the more important thing in my life. Yeah. And it was like free, you know, like uh, the, once I, you know, it just was like, yeah, that's always going to be the more important. That's always going to be the greater. Like, if I was to think about your life, what's your greatest accomplishment? It's McKinsey graduating from college and being good. It's yeah. it's yeah. staying married. Yeah. It's now Drake going to college. It's true. By the way, that is an accomplishment. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's like knowing that you're strong and you yeah. didn't give up and sacrifice and whatever and hoping that it's, you know. Um, but those, that is it. It's not a book. It's not. You know, a stand-up special because that – and once, like, your perspective is in the right, I think, way. Like, I remember – and I love Joan Rivers, but I remember watching this – her first m- movie about, like, you know, right before she came back in the limelight and they showed how many jokes she wrote and everything. And she's like, I'm only truly happy on the stage. I want to say that was a moment in the movie. If I'm wrong, that's how I remember it. And I was like, oh, well, good, because that's not me. Yeah. Because for half the movie, I was feeling like I wasn't ambitious enough watching her work. And then for the second half, I was like, oh, no, I'm good. Yeah, because like, she I made don't... sacrifices you weren't willing to make. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, I am, I'm actually, like, happiest, like, going to the beach with my kids, go- golfing, going to jacu- – like, I just – that is, like, having, like, a really fun day where they've, like, made you laugh, whatever. Yeah. Like, that is – you know, and then for me, and that's something I always wanted with the dream. I was always like, oh, but I will be a mom even if I have to do it on my own. Like mm-hmm. that, that is something, you know, that was for me, not for everybody, obviously, but like for me. So I think then with that, I I could be more like confident but, and I, but I'm even more confident now. It wasn't as easy at Chelsea lately. I did still feel like it was such a high school environment. So there were times I felt popular. There were times I wasn't invited to the slumber party. Yeah, but there you never times- changed who you, even when you yeah. were, even if you felt not confident yeah. or insecure, you didn't let that alter 
what you thought, how you spoke, and who you were. So what I mean is like everybody feels yeah. it. Yeah. But a lot of times people let that affect how yeah. they behave. Right. And you were still you. Yeah, which and is, I, I think that's why the yeah, podcast is like I would have never is. thought that this was the thing. I always had the dream of being a mom in a sitcom or having my own daytime talk show or whatever. And that still might happen. But like this was the thing that I was just like, oh, that's this is clicking. And I remember like I used to wake up the day, you know, the day that the podcast would come out. And I was like, yeah, what, what's going to be the comments? And it would be like really positive. And I was like, oh, OK, I guess this is like working. But you know? also because look on Chelsea, when we would go and go on the round table, yeah. we all got negative comments right. because there was a wide group of people watching the show. Right. You're gonna get good comments on this because the people who listen to this love you, love the right. content. And so they're on board for whatever, which gives you more freedom to be yourself. Which is why I think like panel talk shows and stuff are a little bit in jeopardy. Because their whole thing is always, let's get all different types of people. Yeah, I can't. And I'm like, actually, people want to hear their same opinions, which is why yes. Joe Rogan is huge, which I'm not that so opinions necessarily uh, politically, but just they want to hear about what they want to hear about. Yeah. They don't really want to be preached or schooled or whatever. And they really don't want to hear like opposing views. They really don't. Dude. And so it's like, that's why I think podcasts are so popular. Yes. Yeah. Well, because look, the you know who, you know who, doesn't listen to this podcast. The people who want to know what the statistics were in last week's, you know, basketball games. Right. And that's fine. They have their. Yeah. But the people who want to hear this. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. And that's why they're all. I'm sure your crowds when you go travel now. How well, much sometimes, different? Sometimes if Drake, Peter will go, I just like a success of somebody. He's like, I just don't get it. And I go, yeah. A uh, 55 year old white man, yeah. not the audience. You're not, yeah, this it's is like not. It's like me being like, I just do not get. Yeah. What's that, sk that skateboarding podcast? Yeah, like, who yeah. cares? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, why? Why? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I, like, are you, who would watch the UFC fight or whatever? I'm like, I, yeah, it's not for me. Like, it's how, not. I how mean, great I Heather. would go if someone invited me. me I could too. sit next to Kravis. How, and by the way, with, how. The one but, event I've always wanted to go to and never gone to yeah. is like a box, a yeah, big, like a big, like and a, get dressed up and, and big box. Oh, come on! Even though, like, I really kind of hate the actual like fighting type of stuff, but, but like, how have I not? Okay, these are a couple things that I thought at twenty five for sure I would have been invited okay. to. Sundance, never been invited. Agreed. To. Me too. Um, sexy Vegas boxing big celebrity event. That seems like something. I, yep, Yet I agree. To be invited to. I agree. By the way, I'm on board for both of those. People's Choice. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but honestly, those two. I remember Sundance. Yeah. I was always like, would read about Sundance like in People Magazine. And I'm like, oh, one day I'll definitely be like invited to that in some capacity. <sighs> I, Sundance for me is the big one. People, I, people I did, who I never want Sundance, to... listen, you want to have a special juicy scoop from Sundance and make my dream yeah. come true. Josh can join me. We'll do a nice little show. Oh, we have fun. both. Well, yeah. We should just we should go to Sundance. When is Sundance? I want to say it's like February or March. When is it? Is it February? You guys, there's time. I, I don't have any plans in February. Me yet. neither. My February is wide open. Okay, I say we do a <laughs> lot. Like a, this is what we should do. Whoever's listening and they have a sponsor yep. or something, they want us to spot. They sponsor us. We talk about whatever their product is. And we do a live Juicy Scoop and people can go when they're like bopping around going to those booths and drinking oh, and sweets. stuff between the movies. They come and, and they get to see the live juicy scoop. I love that. Okay. I'm going to say it in my car three times when I drive home. You're going to say it 10 times. Oh, 10 yeah, times. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. You got to say it. I want juicy scoop to go to Sundays. I want juicy scoop. Yeah, yeah. And just say it out loud. Yeah. 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 Don't think it. You got to say it. Your body needs. Yeah. Here, here's so a guy I've been listening yeah. to. Okay. Now, this is whatever hippy dippy stuff I you want. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Hippy dippy. Yeah. So, water. He changes with vibration, right? Okay. Okay. So that we all like, if you vibrate, like there's a, you know, it moves or yeah. heat or so. Like a wave pool at Hurricane Harbor. Sure, exactly. Okay. It, yeah. With less urine. Yes. So, so. <laughs> yeah. Water vibrates to, like, your body is 70% water. Yeah. So the vibrations you put around it, to me. Yeah can change okay so when you're putting those positive vibrations right do you know what i'm saying 
Should like, I also put a vibrator in my vagina? Yes, that's what I was going to say. When, so, I, when I drive around and yes. talk about Sundance, so I also just insert like a nice little so like, this, rabbit. So you go rabbit and yeah. say it 10 times. And I think that ought to do it. I think that's like weird science. You might even make a person. <laughs> Yes, I like so, you know, it. I went to, no, I went that's to, true. That's true, though. I went to elementary school with yeah. one of those kids in Weird Science. Oh, he really? He was the first famous person. You mean so, one of the teenage boys? So it was Alon Mitchell. It was uh, Anthony Michael Hall, and the other kid was Alon Mitchell Smith. Yes. And I went to... Yes. So Alon got this... Alon got the part, and we. Re- I remember, like, whoa, like, this kid's in our... So jealous. Admit how jealous you were. Oh. Because it, it, had, it had to be like ninth grade. Yeah. And you knew what you wanted to do. Oh. And then when he came back and just girls were just like. But this dude, he was in. Do you think that that same dude happened to be home one night during those six weeks and saw the Josh Wolf <laughs> talk show and was like, mother <laughs> I hope so, man, because I remember watching him like this dude. Uh, and and white, weird science, just one of my favorite. What was the girl in that? Uh, Kelly beautiful... Brock. Oh, yeah. Was it Kelly Brock? Yes, it was Kelly Brock. I was going to say it was, I thought it was uh, Hugh Grant's girlfriend that he cheated on with Devon Brown, but it wasn't uh, her. I think you're right. It was Kelly Brock. Yeah, I think the... it was. Like a model. A model's yes. first acting job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. That, that one, that's an Anthony Michael Hall classic. Yeah. Uh, now let me I ask. I, yeah. Let me ask you. When those what? people said, "Ask Josh why he's so skinny," what what did you say? I didn't see a lot. I just thought it was like, "Is uh, Josh w- Wolf has lost a lot of weight? Do you think he's okay?" Something like that. And I was, and I kind of was like, I probably thought you're okay, but I yeah. was like, I don't know if he's like going through something or whatever. But you were still like working and stuff, so I didn't think it was anything. It was really like when I don't go to the gym. My body type is I lose weight. Yeah. And and like like I said, I'm not 35. I can't put it back and on. And were you in L.A. during COVID or were you already in Nashville? We, we left in October. you and your wife moved. Okay. We drove across country in October. So we did yeah. like half and half. Yeah. But actually. And then once you got to Nashville, did they let you go to the gym? Well, once I guess. Land co- of the free. <laughs> COVID never made it to Tennessee. It's so great. The states <laughs> that it never made it to. I never. I said somehow it's I, it Texas, broke out of the border. Texas, Florida. No COVID. Yeah, yeah, no. Apparently, yeah. 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 Um, yeah it's but, so uh, weird. Yeah. 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 There was. It wasn't quite as masked up there. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because when we were driving across country. Yeah. Because we drove obviously from L.A. Yeah. To Tennessee, you could tell as the state. Like when you would cross state lines, like you go to through. If you went through Arizona, it was like you went through. Par- Come on in, yeah, yeah. We, what, where somebody made fun of me for wearing a mask. Oh yeah, they were like, we were in the gas station, and uh, the guy was like, "You wearing a mask?" And I was like, "Yeah," and he was like, "Why?" And I was like, "You, <laughs> yeah, just for just exactly you, yeah. <laughs> you're the exact person. Yeah. You're the exact reason why. Yeah, I, 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 in Tennessee. I've had so much fun though." Okay, so you're in your place. So you and Beth have been married because I went to the 10-year wedding anniversary party. You've been married now for what, like 16 years? Since 17? 2004. Okay, so 17 years. Yeah. Um, and she is the mother that your son knows. Yes. So yep. um, that was that party was really fun. And yep. I love your wife mostly because she's gorgeous and people think we're sisters. She does. She actually said on the yeah. ride over, tell my sister I said yeah. hello. And I said, you bet I will. When we would go do shows together and she happened to be there and then we would take photos and stuff, people would be like, I thought Heather's sister was blonde. Same yeah. cheekbones. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the shape yeah. of everything is yeah. it's crazy. So she is a very successful director. It's done a bunch of movies and she has a hot project that yeah. my Juicy Scoopers are interested in. I can't mention the names of the people. But it's kind of like a Real Housewives-ish of like Nashville it women. Yes. And um, it's absolutely happening, right? It looks okay, to so, be. So yeah. here's what I can tell you. Okay. It's not – when you say housewives-ish, that's right because you know Beth. Right. Beth is not into the drama or the caddy. Right. So right. it's more of real life – Drama, like yeah. not we're not setting it up. We're not. She's following not, their own lives, but not their lives, their issues with each other so much. Which is how that's how it. that's how Housewives started. It was like PBS documentary. It was like following their lives, and then when some of the girls started to fight, that spiked, and then they were like, "Oh, that's what we want to do in every single one." Which is kind of a shame. Now all the girls are divorced. Yeah, there's no husbands. There's no kids, and I think people really like 
seeing other families that reflect their own, yes. even if they're rich and famous. You this know? is more – it's more docu-series. Yeah. And it's more these women, when they're having troubles in their lives, these other women are lifting them up. Yeah. Right? So – and you're you're dealing with actual – Like real re- girlfriends, the way real girlfriends would deal with it's stuff. It's 100% right. And yeah. So, and you know Beth is not about manufactured drama. Right. She's not about – she's more about, hey, let's all feel good about it. It's not like bad things aren't going to happen to these people. They yeah. are. But we're going to look at these real-life experiences and, and their friends are going to lift them up. It's not about them yelling at each other and being – What I what yeah. I love is that it's Beth's show, not just because she – the way she is. But it's interesting because – you know, Bravo, which started out as this network for women, is really run by men. Yeah. And then you look at how it's become. And I'm look, I'm still watching and enjoying it. But it, you're like, well, wow, that is interesting that, you know, the head is a man and all these women are and fighting with each other yeah. and destroying each other when it's like. That's really not what it should be. So I really love that she's doing this, and I'm uh, people. I'm excited to see it. And I will uh, tell you, and, and and I will have her send you the. Obviously, you can't show anybody, but yeah. the the basically the sizzle that yeah. the network's been looking at. It, when you watch it, because I don't need to tell you this, I don't watch The Housewives just yeah. because for me, I don't want to see them i don't like seeing people talk to each other like that like yeah. for me that i'm like this is part of some of it is like are they really filming that like to me i almost feel like god well some of it too is like now they know they have to yeah. do that which is like they weren't doing that in the beginning and so it's a hard thing to fix i don't to know how be... to fix it i'm trying i'm up every night people <laughs> i don't know how to fix it one way i'm gonna fix it is i'm gonna watch best show exactly well to be in the, the a same... group yeah. of women right you have to cause that drama right Right. And so if you're in the B group of women where they're not getting the same endorsement, because you make your money from those shows yeah. off the show. Right. They're not making their money on the show. So right. you want to be in that A group. Right. And in order to be in the gay group, A group. Or the you, gay group. Or the gay group, you've got to do some shit. Yeah. You know? And um, yeah, so they're not they're not doing that. But you're, yeah. you're going to love. Yeah. You When the show gets up and running. Right. You should come do a juicy scoop from the set. Yes. Definitely, and interview all the girls. Yeah, yeah I'll definitely that would be do that. A, that'd that would be, be super fun. Fantastic. Yes, Josh. What else do you want to tell everybody that you're doing? Oh, besides talking to yourself in a car with a mask on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the mask on in the car, people. I was like, who? that's my favorite. Yeah, who are you protecting yourself? I, yeah. Um, I have. Okay, I'm at. Uh, I'm in Oklahoma City at the. I don't know when this is coming out. This is going to be out in like uh, probably next week. Okay. Next so week or the week after. When is, just give the dates. Who Oklahoma cares? City is July 22nd, 23rd, okay. 24th All right, um, at Bricktown Comedy. It, I, I'm in Nashville July 25th. I don't know if you know, I've been doing these fun like variety almost type shows in Nashville with country stars and we, we improv songs. A lot of my act now, Heather, this is one of the things that happened to me recently yeah. is I've really, you know how Jiffy and I was doing, we're doing yes. the guitar. I really leaned into guitar because I have so much fun doing it. When you yeah. come to my shows now, it's like a party. It's yeah. just fun. It's 30 minutes of weird, goofy parody songs. Yeah. People singing along. It's like a good time. And so on Nashville- How if- perfect. Your, your dream was not to have your own talk show. It was for you to be a country music star. Yeah. And here you are, a okay. country music star we'll get, in Nashville. You ready for this? With a couple funnies. Go. <laughs> Look, me and Loretta Lynn's granddaughter, Taylor Lynn, uh-huh. we are going to- I was talking to her. She did a Is song Loretta Lynn, I was born to be a coal miner's daughter. Yeah. Minor daughter. Yep. Okay. And her granddaughter. Now you're with a granddaughter. Jeez. And her voice is like magic. Was it as good as the, what I just did? Close. Okay. Yeah. I When I close, do it again, I'm going to close my eyes. I was born to be a coal miner's daughter. Yeah. I just feel I can smell the okay. coal when you- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you sing, I can smell the coal. But yeah, uh, but she and I are going to do like a we're going to parody her granddaughter, her grandma, and Conway Twitty. Uh huh. And we're going to put on like a a you know a dinner show where people got to dress up and come. And we're going to do one of those kind of like Dolly and Kenny tandems where it's going to be a funny dinner. And we, you know you got to dress up, and we're going to be in costume, and we're going to write. It's all innuendo because those shows were like PG, PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah. And we're just going to put it up in Nashville. Is it going to be like Dottie Marie and the innuendo was what yes. that they were fucking? Yes, yeah, I yeah. love it. <laughs> By the way, Dottie and Marie, <laughs> I am going to have to go back and watch some of those shows. I I think I'm going to enjoy them 
looking back. I just remember being little and being like, they're a couple of my brothers. Like, no, they're not. And I'm like, well, I want them to be. <laughs> they, by the way, they had many great looking kids. And I remember going to bed and my, and my brother being like, okay, I'm like, tell me a story. And he's like, what do you want me to tell you about? I'm like, make, an ep- ep- make up an episode of um, Brady Bunch. He's like, okay. And I go, and I want it to be that Greg and, and Marsha get together. And he's like, they're brother and sister. I'm like, but they don't, even then at like six, I'm like, they don't have the same parents. They're step parents. And I just, Think that they, yeah. That right <laughs> goes. So Jan sees Greg <laughs> leaving Marsha's room, and then I remember he goes, "I can't do this anymore," and he left. And I was like six. Yeah, I don't. Blame That's how him. weird I was all the way from birth. Um, I'm excited for all your stuff. Where can they follow you? Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com. One last date. The yes. last weekend in in January, West Palm Beach, 29th, 30th, 31st. Beth will be with me on that trip, so we sh- I always bring her on stage and do some weird shit with her. And- um, I was just in Palm Beach. That's a great club. Great club. That whole area, it's like a poppin', like, it was, it's like nightclubs and everything. Yeah. So once you're done, there's the Copper Blues, there's all these other clubs. It's but really fun. The last time I was there, the guy said to me, hey, he goes, hey, you going to walk home late? I go, yeah. And he goes, if you see a bunch of 12-year-olds on bikes, he goes, walk the other way. And I was like, Why? And he goes, we have gangs of 12-year-olds on bikes that drive by and hit people with bats. I'm like, Jesus. I was like, what? What? But then I thought, I come on, bring it. I bet you I could take a couple out. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> but that was like, can you imagine beach? 12-year-olds on bikes? But what? Well. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing they're it. They're strong. They never got COVID there, fairly. No, they're yeah. safe in, in Tennessee, fine. too. Yeah. And I saw that you're going to be the winery in Nashville in yes. November, and I'm going to come by with some people. Oh, good, good. Yes, I think um, the last, the Saturday, I think it's the 20th, Saturday, November 20th. Thanks yeah. for giving my Cine Winery Nash, uh, Nashville a plug. You can see Josh standing in the corner, mm-hmm. laughing loudly. You can squeeze his muscles. Pretending that I didn't want a spot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do a little guest spot. Yeah. A little guest spot with Joshi. Love you. I love you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate so it. So good to see you again. Thank you.